Hello people, welcome to my channel. My name is Hilary and today I will be doing a Dune reading vlog. So Dune by Frank Herbert is one of the most well-known and I think loved science fiction series or well, even the first book, just the first book uh, in the world, I think. So this is about Paul Atreides and uh, it is his adventures basically in a world called Dune, basically a sand a world with um, big ants worms. <laughs> and it's very political, it's very ecological about uh, the world and water resources and how you have to deal with those, especially in a desert world, and also about family being a hero and so on, so on, so on. So this book starts with acknowledgement from Brian Herbert, the son of Frank Herbert, and he goes into depth about his relationship with his father and also uh, how his father's life uh, influenced writing this book and also what he reads into this book. And uh, he says that he learned a lot about the character of his father from this book uh, and also at the childhood he didn't get very well on with his father but in later years they did. So this series consists of 15 books or so, I'm not sure, I forgot to <laughs> check that. However, it is more divided into different kind of trilogies mainly. Uh, so you can read those, make a little bit of pause, it will take up a lot of uh, big timeline so you can go and take breaks in between more than I would say maybe Wheel of Times. Uh, this is the beautiful edition uh, and I do plan to read in this vlog just the first Dune book and then I heard that the second and the third Dune Messiah and Children of Dune will be coming out in the same uh, graphical art in next April so I'm thinking that I will be reading those two books in ebook format and then buying them when they come out. So I have been very very intimidated by this book. I have had this book over a year and I just haven't picked it up because I've been really really scared. However I have seen the first movie. I have read the June graphic novel book one so I do know a little bit of backstory about what this world is, how, what is the main plot and I think I'm mu as much prepared as I can going into it. Additionally also my husband has read the whole June books, uh, at least I think most of them, so I can always reference him and ask clarifications or maybe even some ideas that, that I have about some theories. Um, this, I really liked this, this is uh, written by Brian Herbert and a friend Kevin J. Anderson and I'll show you a little sneak peek into the, this. Uh, the second, uh, it should be in three parts and the second is coming out in paperback in August but I want the same hardback so I'm waiting until I think it was October when that is coming out. And I think what should be going over also before I start, I'm sorry it's a little bit hectic, is that uh, the first Dune trilogy, Dune, Children of Dune and Dune Messiah, is in three parts. So this book is about the, um, Paul, uh, Paul's uh, basically origin story or uh, his beginning story. Uh, Dune Messiah is him being the hero, but also uh, about consequences of being a hero, not is always as simple and also if you make mistakes it will be much much higher stakes. And the third book will be about his children. Uh, so it will take, uh, even this first trilogy will take uh, a bigger time scale. And how, oh, additionally this first book of Dune also is in three parts. So we have Dune, we have Muhadib and the prophet and basically this is will be the three parts of the first June book so this is the June 
book one, and the second is new hadith, and the third one is the prophet. I don't know if they plan on doing the rest of the trilogy, the Messiah and Children of Doom also, or not. So we'll see about that. I also know there is some additional comics or graphic novels about the universe. So we'll see, maybe I'll read those at some point also. Uh, what I also wanted to know is that most people just read the first book and leave it at that. However, for example, Daniel Green also said that you will see Frank Herbert's brilliance in the second book, To Messiah, where you can see all the little details and plots that he has laid down in this book. And you can see the story really picking up this because this is first book it will lay down a lot of lore so I'm really really excited to pick up the second book and the third book definitely. Additional controversial topic is also the ending basically Frank Herbert died before he could write the last book so uh, Brian Herbert and I think it was Kevin G. Anderson uh, maybe I'm not sure maybe it was just uh, Brian Herbert uh, took his father's notes he had very extensive notes and he finished the last book. However, there is a lot of fans that didn't like it because Frank Herbert himself has said that he will keep a lot of things open with open endings so you can interpret them however you want. You can build up the world even more with your own imagination. However, Brian Herbert did answer a lot of questions. His style is a little bit different, not to keep things open-ended, but at least close some points. And a lot of fans, as I've heard, did not like it. However, uh, when I asked my husband about what he thought, he really liked it. You know, he likes to get solid answers to questions that uh, may have arisen up throughout the series. So <laughs> if I ever manage to reach that far, maybe I can tell you how I like that decision. But for now I have started and read about 100 pages. Uh, it's going very slowly. <laughs> I do have to say that it is a little bit my reading slump-ish that is going on in summer. Uh, it's a little bit uh, slow starting. Uh, I do uh, like that it follows the movie quite closely or the movie follows the book quite closely. It has just gotten up a little bit of the political talk, the details. Uh, uh, so I, I, all the events are quite familiar. What makes it a little bit hard to read is that it mentions different kinds of words, organizations, situations, and then maybe goes and elaborates about them a couple of chapters later so you are very very confused especially if you don't if you're going in blind uh, but also like some organizations it has mentioned i don't think the movie has mentioned them or even the graphic novel so um it is has me quite confused also what bothers me is that there are no chapter numbers, which is quite a trivial thing. However, I like to keep track of how, my, how many chapters I've read and so on, so that is a little bit disturbing. Uh, but otherwise, I'm quite enjoying. Uh, what was surprising, I think, was the second chapter, I think it was, where we get Harkonnen, the evil bad guy in this book, um, a point of view. Uh, we had that in the movie also, but usually in the books you don't get the point of view of the bad guys. But if they do a movie adaptation, they usually give it just to give a backstory and also see what else is going on. So I thought the movie just did that. However, here they they had that scene and also uh, they basically gave away the plot of the book one of Dune. Uh, in the graphical details, like what they are planning, how it should be going, who is the bad guy, and I honestly didn't expect it. Another thing I wanted to mention are a couple of things that they mentioned. So there are a few scenes, uh, quite in the beginning of the movie also, where uh, Jessica, the Paul's mother, uh, arrives in Arrakis, is it called in Dune, in their new home, and there is one of the Fremen women as her servant and there is the crystal blade mentions so it's a blade very well known and one of the uh, thing is that 
it should never be taken off the planet. And that sentence, it should never be taken off the planet, well, put some bells ringing in my head and I'm pretty sure it will be taken off the planet. At least I think so. And another thing is when they go from Caladan to Dune, they use uh, planet, uh, uh, how to say in English, interplanetary uh, ships with special crew. And they mentioned that the crew uh, should never be seen. Don't mention it why. But again, that sentence rang me some bells, so I'm pretty sure throughout the text in books or whatever it is in the series, uh, we will be seeing them. So these are two sentences that really popped up in my mind. I wrote them down, so uh, I would know that when we do get them, how I know I got my questions answered. But uh, otherwise, I'm quite still in, in the beginning of the book, so uh, Paul with his family has just arrived in Arrakis and they are just uh, getting familiarized with the place and that's about it. So uh, we haven't gone into the desert yet, we haven't seen the big worms and hopefully I can get a little bit more into this book. Usually like the first couple of hundred it takes me quite slow and then I get really really invested and finish the book. So hopefully this happens also with this one because I do want to read a couple of other books and this is my like, secret extra book which I am reading to do this special vlog so we'll see but I'll come back but when I've uh, read a little bit more or if something really surprising happens. So I have read for right now a little bit over one third of the book so I finished the first part of three parts that the drone has and basically I have reached uh, the point where the graphical novel I showed you previously ended and also almost quite close to where the movie ended. So the movie goes a tiny bit into the part two, the Muhadi uh, part, but basically we have reached where uh, there was a big battle and our main character now has find Paul has found out some things about his past and present and future and he has changed quite a lot and uh, they are in the desert now and coming up with a plan what to do. So uh, uh, I'll go through a couple of things that I have written down and the first thing I did want to mention is uh, the Baron Harkonnen. Um, it's quite interesting. We see a lot of different characters' point of views and we see also his and it's quite interesting to see the bad guy's point of view in a book and I quite enjoy it. I wanted to mention two more things. So one of the characters dies quite a bit in the beginning and if you have seen the movie or read the book you probably know who. I'm not gonna me mention it, I'm not gonna mention it. Uh, well, it is, how can I say, uh, it is kind of expected that way, but uh, we also saw that character's point of view when just before the death scene and it was really movingly written. I was so sad that that character died. Also, uh, we got a little bit of big revelations about, uh, we don't know who uh, Jessica the mother, mother is or father for the lineage, it has been quite hidden away and that's a big thing especially because the being Jesserists, the witches basically, uh, they keep a very true tracking of genealogy, so who has, who is related to whom and during that time I think some, I think my husband said something happened and they usually don't have that kind of information anymore, I think. So that's kind of a big thing. Uh, so we got to, to know that and we see Paul a little bit struggling with that also and I think this will continue throughout this book. Uh, what I kind of like and I'm surprised that I am, I am not weirded out by is the 
flow between different characters of point of view. So we have a scene, for example, there is three different kind of characters or five. So we, we will move continuously from, for example, between the three characters point of views without you understanding even that it's not a third point of view, but we get their inner thoughts and everything else. And the point of view who is thinking these things flows very, very nicely. It's very well written and uh, surprisingly, I'm not disturbed by it at all. So uh, what I can tell you that isn't too much is that Paul and mother are in the desert and they are going to look up the Fremen. And I'm quite interested in seeing uh, that side of it and also maybe uh, discover the world a little bit more, get more information about uh, uh, Spice the Melange and maybe even a little bit more backstory because we don't still know anything. Basically, we are just just uh, upon this events and we are just going or just going in. And uh, what I also wanted to mention as a last thing is uh, it still is and it will probably be for a long time. Basically, as I said, we are just thrust into this world, so we don't get detailed explan explanations exactly what each thing is. For example, there is a couple of person called Mentat, and as far as I know, they have like really enhanced logical or reasoning, thinking conditions somehow, but that's all we get. But I think there should be additional book about Mentats, and after reading that book, I will get the information I need. So basically, we are thrust upon this world and they won't explain us most of the things except when it's logically coming up that somebody explaining something to somebody, uh, which I kind of love, but I kind of also hate because I'm getting a little bit confused and I think I will be getting confused more <laughs> throughout the series. But I do have to say that it has been surprisingly easy to read and also mm, I was afraid that it's going to be really complicated. I haven't read a lot of sci-fi if I knew almost, so I was afraid that it would be too complicated for me that I don't want to pick it up. But if I pick it up, I don't want to be too tired for it because there is a lot of political talk and details that you have to pay attention to uh, because, uh, because it doesn't explain you anything, so you have to pay attention to, to understand things. But uh, it's really really well written and very enjoyable and I usually read like 60 pages without even noticing it. Uh, so I'm really excited to get to book two and I think uh, my plan right now is to come back when I have finished book two unless there's something happens that I need to talk to or about. But I'll see you in a little bit under 200 pages.
finished Dune. So I didn't come back after I finished book two. And I basically breezed through in a few days the rest of the book. What I can say about uh, the book, the part two and three, is that uh, it picked up a uh, pace a lot more. And also, uh, we had some time jumps and the end battle got concluded or this story got concluded. So I don't want to talk too much about that because it is uh, so spoilery, but I'll give you my final thoughts of this book. What I can say in the overall, I was surprised by how easy it was to read it in a way. I had no problems when I picked this book up to breeze through 100 pages in a little bit of time. And honestly, it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. However, it is a little bit of difficult read. Firstly, we have the omnipresent uh, narrator that jumps through different characters' head. Personally, I was not bothered by it. Uh, with changing most of the time, we changing uh, different character point of views, whoever were in that particular scene. However, at some point, I did, especially involving with time jumps, it got a little bit confusing because I was reading a chapter going like halfway in, and then I figured, wait, we have jump time in two years. Like, uh, so it is a little bit hard to understand and also since we have a lot of characters that we jump through I do love to see um, this is a way to see what other characters are doing but also some of those scenes felt a little bit old it wasn't as continuous and uh, some scenes probably could have cut it out for the plot of the book uh, the book itself spoils most of the plot. For example, as I said, I think the second chapter in, we get the point of view of Byron Harkonnen, the, basically the evil dude of this book, and he says exact details what's gonna happen in first half of the book. So, and it's not just that we get also, since we do get into the heads of a lot of characters, and uh, we have some people who can see the future, uh, we do get the base, the overall plot spoiled a lot. However, in the world building and everything else, it's a little bit more complicated. So we do get the general world building, but a lot of details about this world are left unsaid. And as far as I asked my husband, he said that uh, some of them you get in later books, some of them you get in the spin-off series books for special characters, for example, Mentats. Uh, these are like advisory people who are really good at uh, analyzation, but we basically get barely any information and we have to pick up these details within the text. And also, for example, the big worms that are going, living in the dune on Arrakis, um, also the whole ecology, we get tiny snippets thrown in here and there, but sometimes they aren't paid very much attention, so you have to look at them to get the overall picture. And as I said before, Frank likes to keep things open also, that means that some details we might never get some information. Uh, so on the overall, I still really, really enjoyed reading it and it was still quite easy. I know I miss a lot since uh, the beginning, uh, the story, um, little bit conclusion or summary by Brian Herbert the Sun talks also about that you can read this book from different point of views religion ecology politics corruption the human nature and so on and you each time find something new it is absolutely true also I haven't read many sci-fi's and I'm still delving into high epic fantasies so I probably missed a lot and at some point when I'm gonna reread it I'm gonna discover so many new things about this book. A couple of more things to go over so I actually really enjoyed the politics to human nature corruption storyline it is a little bit going into like dark morally gray characters not, not 
wife because we have, for example, Paul, the main character, a lot of pressure under him, given a lot of powers. He wants to do good, but also there is always a price and it's going to be really exciting to see where the second book goes and because you see Paul developing because at the start he was 15 years old, barely developed and a lot of things happen, a lot of pressure is put in under him, over him, on him. But uh, you, did, you can see how that changes him also. His powers, the specific powers he has, will change him so much and you see him developing. And I'm really excited to see uh, where the second book goes. Uh, Brian Herbert a little bit spoiled uh, it, but I don't want to spoil it for you. But I think in these books, being spoiled is not a problem. <laughs> there will be still so many new information and also uh, the trick to see how it goes there is gonna be so exciting. And honestly, you can read this uh, as standalone, but I'm pretty sure if you have finished it, you're still excited to see where it goes next. So my plan is to read the trilogy, the Dune Messiah and Children of Dune, and then maybe take a little bit of a break and see where it goes next. For the characters, I mostly enjoyed Paul, however, some aspects of him were a little bit confusing. Uh, and there were other characters we got, they were decent enough, but I didn't feel a true connection with them. However, there were a couple of scenes where some of the ca characters got together after some time and it was really emotional to read about that. For the female characters, I think Jessica, Paul's mother, was the best written one. And what I can say about uh, Shani, I think she was called, I felt her really, really flat <laughs> in both the movie and in the books. And uh, the same problem I had uh, with characters was in the movie also. I didn't feel connected with anyone because it's such a big epic sto story that uh, the movie itself also was jumping through a lot of events really fast and I felt I didn't get any connections, I get to know any characters with much depth. The book does a little bit solve that problem with us being inside their head so you get a little bit into their characteristics or how they're thinking but uh, yeah that wasn't. I recommend still for you to pick it up uh, maybe after watching the movie it will probably most definitely help or maybe just go over and look at the synopsis of the whole plot of this. So because as I said for the book already spoils so much of its plot uh, that it will help out a lot in my opinion but otherwise I really really enjoyed it and honestly I wouldn't mind picking up the second book right now however <laughs> my, I have my uh, obviously they are uh, put down so maybe if I have time left at the end of the month I'll pick it, up, pick it up or if not then definitely in September but this is about it for me. I really really enjoyed reading this, this beautiful edition of Dune by Frank Herbert. Uh, if you have read it or if you're interested in reading it please let me know down in the comments but in general I do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and bye!